Hi, I'm Matt Collins. I'm head gardener here at the Garden Museum. So the Garden Museum has been around since the 70s. Uh, we're standing in a former churchyard, uh, well, effectively a graveyard of St. Mary's Church at Lambeth. Um, it was discovered in the 70s, well, rediscovered in the 70s uh, by someone called Rosemary Nicholson. It's now evolved to become a, a place that celebrates the history, culture, um, and sort of fanaticism about gardening, particularly English gardening or, or British gardening, um, but uh, also the wider network of, of gardening across the world, really. Um, so we, we celebrate through exhibitions, through our, our planting itself, um, through a permanent collection of items that relate to horticulture through the ages, um, and uh, have a series of events and lectures and loads of really exciting things in our programme uh, going forward. This is the Sporum Night Heron which is in its kind of transition at the moment, but it has these amazing berries that are going to turn sort of jet black uh, that come out with these amazing white flowers. In the spring, it comes up like a weird bamboo and then it kind of explodes in these white flowers um, and then fades to these berries at the end, um, which is just a fantastic all round plant. The plant that people always ask me about is this Tetrapanax, um, which is a, a Taiwanese uh, rice paper plant. The rice paper was made from the pith inside these huge leaf stems, you can see. Um, but it's just a, a stunning plant to, to have within this kind of courtyard space. Um, great for shade. I mean, it likes a little bit of sun, but it's, it's really good for shade. Uh, creates a lot of shade and creates a bit of an atmosphere in here that, that people seem to love. So lots of the planting in here is quite shady, so quite shade tolerant. We do get a lot of light in spring and we get the warmth of the, the sort of London microclimate along with the box uh, effect of the, of the glass. Um, so things are quite protected, but it's also quite shady. We have these vast plane trees that hang right above the whole garden, um, which are a bit of a nightmare in the sense that they drop a lot of leaves and they cause a lot of shade, um, but they also add quite a lot of protection. So lots of the planting within this space is, is, was originally when it went in 2017 was, was fairly new. Um, lots of people wouldn't have recognised a lot of the plants. They've all become quite popular now, so the garden is, is sort of continually evolving. Um, but the idea is that you walk into a space that feels slightly new, different, fresh, um, to use the word exotic, I suppose, in the sense that lots of these plants are, are kind of from warmer climates that survive in here because of the glass box. These are the gingers that I mentioned. They're just coming towards their end. This is uh, Hedichium wardii, a big yellow ginger, beloved of wasps uh, in the summer. Amazing scented flowers um, collected by Frank Kingdom Ward in, in the sort of mid-century. Uh, on, on plant excursions into China. And so that, again, is a comparatively recent introduction uh, from there. So that's Siddiquium velosum, uh, which is just a, a beautiful dwarf um, Hedichium ginger, uh, which seems to tolerate the kind of different light levels in here really, really well. We've split it, so it's, it's sort of, we've split it into different pots right the way around the courtyard. So it, it's kind of just coming into flowering now, but um, it's another one that's just absolutely brilliant. The British love of gardening, I think, well, I think it probably stems from our climate. We have the most amazing sort of temperate, uh, reliable, not too cold, not too hot climate. And we have for a very long time. Obviously, things are changing as, as the climate uh, sort of sees increasing extremes. But in general, um, for many centuries, it's, it's been a place of, of sort of easy growing for, for a huge amount, a, hu a very diverse amount of plant life. Mm -hmm.